If you've ever heard the message, we're currently experiencing higher than expected call volume and wonder to yourself, I don't know if that means what you think it means. This lecture might be for you. <laughs> we're going to talk about queuing systems, uh, which are models used to describe people waiting in line or other similar constructs uh, that doesn't have to have anything to do with people. Um, and so we're, they're pretty interesting and we'll spend a couple of lectures on them. Today we're just going to introduce some terminology and spend a fair amount of time actually giving a, a careful um, notational system that's used to classify the different sorts of queuing systems that we might encounter. And then we're going to try out a couple of them and work out their limiting distributions to sort of, they're really simple models, uh, these, these first two we'll see, uh, just to kind of get a feeling for how do the complexities arise and uh, what kind of results might we expect. All right, let's go. Let's introduce queuing systems with a specific problem in mind. Um, so these are queuing systems. Um, and the properties that these things have um, can be can be described sort of generically, but I think it's easiest if you think of a very specific problem. So think of a queue that you uh, wait in while you're uh, going to it, while you're at the airport getting ready to check into a flight. So you've got your bags with you, you're walking up towards the desk, uh, ready to get a boarding pass or something like that. Um, and then you stand in a queue. And so uh, that's an example of a system, the process, uh, the, the whole system of uh, processing all of these uh, passengers waiting to check into uh, flights. Um, and so here are some, some ways that we can characterize the, the elements of the, the system. So we have customers. Um, and these, these customers arrive, so they arrive at the queue. Uh, we have a facility or a counter that processes the customers or services them. Um, we have a service time, or the time it takes to service each customer. And we have some sort of a capacity. Sometimes the capacity is infinite. Right, so these are the sort of generic properties of the uh, queuing system, and it's it is going to be useful to think of one specific problem, like, like standing in line at the airport or standing in a queue at the airport. Um, but it's also kind of important to uh, remind yourself that this is just an example. Um, there are lots of different examples. Uh, so the airport check-in is just one. Another very classic example where this is applied is a call center, uh, where people call in asking for help. Um, uh, um, like a facility that repairs machines or a parking lot. I think we used this uh, parking lot example at the very first lecture of the class, maybe. Um, lots of different examples. Um, it, also, it doesn't always have to involve kind of people uh, being processed. It can involve something a little more interesting, like, oh, I don't know if it's more interesting, but a, a very, very kind of different, like you can imagine thinking of, say, the immune system uh, processing a virus, uh, like, like the coronavirus. The virus enters the body somehow, it reproduces. The immune system can, in a way, maybe be thought of as like the counter 
uh, that has some number of servers that service or neutralize the virus. Um, and that's just another example. Uh, so you, you should sort of keep in mind that this has broad application to lots of different things, uh, but we're going to use the, the language of customers and counters and stuff like that uh, just to sort of keep things, at least keep the description simple. So the notation that we're going to be using, uh, so our notation, uh, we're going to be saying that x of t is the number of customers in the system. Um, and so this is going to be like a process for us. So x of t for t greater than or equal to zero, a real number. So it's a mark, or it's going to be a Markov process, but a continuous process. These don't have to be Markov processes, but they are going to be for us. Um, so this is this is number of customers. in the system. And the number of system or at a time t, of course. And the number of customers in the system has sort of two pieces. There's the customers who are being served. Uh, so like at, in the airport example, the people who are actually at the desk uh, speaking to the agents. Um, and then there's the customers that are waiting to be served, the customers that are standing there uh, waiting for their chance to get up to the desk. And so we'll say that uh, the customers in system consists of these two parts, right? So it's customers, uh, I don't, it's uh, customers who are being served. Uh, plus customers who are waiting in the line or in the queue. And so we'll, when we say customers arrive, what we mean is they arrive to the queue. They arrive into the waiting population, um, and then they wait, and then they eventually get served. Um, and the service time, some amount of time, and stuff like that. All right, so let's make a little sketch of the problem just so that it's kind of clear uh, where all the little pieces uh, are. Uh, so it's just a sketch. And so again, we're going to sort of keep in mind the airport uh, problem, standing in line, waiting for uh, checking into an airport. So let's suppose that the, the queue is bounded by, you know, those little, those little ropes uh, or something like that, that they, I don't know what you call those, but you have to, you have to follow along like a, like a little maze. Uh, let's say it looks like this. Um, and then there's like another little rope here. Another one here. Another one here. Um, and then this thing could keep on going. Um, and let's say the customers uh, will represent them with these little gray dots. So there's one, another. So these are customers waiting in the queue. one more there um, and then uh, let's say that the counter uh, where the people get serviced uh, use a different color for that I guess it's like this thing here and let's say the servers um, are here Right? And then some customers are being served. So there's customers sitting here uh, being served. Now, so let's, let's sort of describe what's, what's happening here, um, all the different pieces. So um, this whole thing uh, is the system. And it has a certain capacity for customers. Uh, so number of gray dots that can fit in it. That includes both the ones at the desks uh, or at the counter and the ones in the queue. Uh, so the capacity refers to this. Uh, 
Uh, and then over here, these guys are the customers waiting to be served. And then these, these guys here, these customers here are being served. And so when, when a new customer comes, uh, so we'll put them over here. So this is sort of outside the system. Uh, they enter the system like this. I'll move this over a bit. So this is a new customer entering the system. Uh, so they're not counted in the in the uh, number of people uh, or number of customers around until they get into the queue or into the system. And then when when a customer is finished uh, down here, they leave the system. So maybe there's some customer uh, down here that's that's on their way out or has has already left. Uh, Uh, been serviced the, this person has already like departed or been serviced by the by the system um, so this is this is the the picture that you should kind of have in your mind but again it's important I think to remind yourself that we're not really just talking about one problem and that there are a lot more uh, applications that you could uh, you could find for this we should probably also just label these bits as well so this is the counter And these guys here, these are the servers. They don't count against the capacity of the system. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's introduce the terminology we're going to use to classify these systems. So this is classifying. Uh, queuing systems. So we're just gonna we're gonna use a special notation uh, that was invented for this purpose um, by a person called Kendall. Uh, so this is gonna be a four component system. of notation. Uh, this is by somebody called Kendall, a version of uh, Kendall's notation. I think there's actually lots of different types of it, but this is the version that we'll be using in this module. Um, this is a person, I think their name is David Kendall. Um, they're British. Uh, I think they uh, lived quite long, uh, maybe died only recently, but were born in the early 1900s. Um, anyhow, the, 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 the thing looks like this. So it has four parts. So it's part one, then we use a slash, part two, another slash, part three, and so on. Uh, so these four pieces. And um, these pieces, the first parts in this class, uh, what we're going to talk about are going to be basically set. Uh, here. Uh, they can be different, and I'll tell you uh, some of the things they can be, but we're actually going to just use uh, uh, two, it, about, we're going to use one value for each of those uh, in the examples that we try here. Um, the second ones, or, sorry, three and four, uh, we'll, we'll use a variety of values or uh, things for those. Okay, so the, the pieces look like this. So number one, is what we call the input mechanism. And again, it's it's fixed for, for the examples we're going to try, but there are lots of different uh, things you can actually have in there. Um, so the let the, usually it's indicated with a letter. So M is which is what we're going to use. This stands for Markovian. Uh, 
Um, and so this means that the input mechanism is going to be a Poisson process. So the arrival of uh, the customers is going to be a Poisson process, like a counting up um, into the, as customers arrive into the system. Um, and this is the thing we're going to be using here. But the other possibilities are you could have um, the customers not arriving um, sort of probabilistically, but rather in a deterministic way. So that's labeled by D, and this means deterministic arrivals. So maybe there's some kind of schedule, um, and the customers all arrive at a fixed, uh, you know exactly when they're coming. Right? Um, and then there's another, there's like a, another symbol that's used if there's some other uh, arrangement, and that's just called general. So the Kendall notation could have M, D, or G here. We are actually going to just stick with M. Uh, that's the exact types of problems that we're going to do. Uh, but there could be uh, M, D, or G here in Kendall's notation. Uh, the second thing we're going to be, uh, the, the second category here in Kendall's notation uh, this is the service time distribution. Oops. So the service time distribution. So this is something that describes um, uh, the, the values that you could have for the amount of time it takes to process each of the customers. So that's the service time. Um, and so here we're going to use M. Letter M is used again for, uh, you can guess for uh, Markovian, but this is an exponent. This means we have exponential independent identically distributed service times. Um, and that's what we're going to be using here. Um, but you could have others as well. Um, and so one other example, uh, or one other code that's used in this Kendall notation, again, is D, which stands for deterministic. And that could be, um, you know, maybe it's it's uh, like a constant. Uh, maybe it's just an example, like maybe you know exactly how long it takes for each customer to be serviced. And that doesn't really fit so well for the airplane, um, uh, the airport example, but it could for lots of other ones. You could imagine maybe we're talking about the manufacturer of some objects um, and pieces are coming in the queue the, the, or, or the repair, or I don't know. You could imagine lots of different systems uh, where you're describing a queue uh, where the service time is actually known. Um, and then there's also general, which is similarly just some other thing that is not either of these two. So again, these two are going to be fixed for us, um, the input mechanism and the service distribution. But just be aware that there are other values that people could actually uh, use. The next thing is just uh, two different numbers. Uh, so the number, the number of servers. All right, and that's just straightforward. That's like the that's the number of the number of pink dots here in the in the diagram. Um, and then the last one is just the capacity. And the capacity could be infinite. And uh, that's typically if you're talking about a, an infinite capacity system, it's usually just omitted. Okay, so let's let's just show a couple of simple examples of the notation. Uh, so, 
uh, if we had if we had a so let's just call these examples of Kendall's notation right so if we have the system that looks like this so let's say it's mm1 all right so what does that mean so the it's a Poisson distributed, uh, Poiss oh, sorry, it's not Poisson. <laughs> it's a Poisson process arrivals. So we have the arrivals are a Poisson process. Um, the service times are uh, the IID exponential distributed. And there's one server. And the capacity is infinite. All right. Um, another, another example that's not the type that we will consider altogether here, but uh, so D M S S. Right, so this is S, the S's might be numbers here. Uh, so this means um, uh, there's some kind of uh, the D is deterministic, so uh, this is some sort of like constant inter arrival times. times between the arrivals that's when the customers arrive um, it's got iid distributed exponential distributed uh, service times and both the capacity uh, so the capacity is s and the number, uh, sorry, there's S servers and there's S capacity. Okay, uh, so that's just an example here. This particular example means there isn't really any queue because uh, the number of, of, of customers being served counts against the capacity. Right, so this, that's what this means here. There's actually no place to wait. All right. All right, so let's try our first example queuing system. All right, so this is going to be each one of these, I guess you could call an example. Uh, we're going to do the M, M, one one system and so this guy the m and m are going to stay the same for us um and what those mean of course uh we've just seen it is that so this is a the arrivals are a poisson process And what that means, uh, and we'll say with a rate lambda, what that means is that the sojourn times are exponentially distributed. So we'll write that down. With parameter lambda. And the service times, so the second M means that the service times, and we'll use these over and over again, are also exponentially distributed. Uh, but we'll use a different parameter for that. Mu. And so 
uh, well, I'll get back to the meaning of those symbols in a second. Um, and we've got the S, the, the two last numbers mean we have one server and it means we have a capacity of one. And that means this is what we talked about in the last example or the last, the last, like, uh, to sort of practice with the notate notation. Oops. Um, what this means is that there isn't any waiting area at all uh, because the the capacity of one is the one person who's doing the serving or is the one person who's being serviced. You could say it's sort of like a queueless queue in a way, actually. Okay, so so here for this system, since there's only a serv since there's only a capacity of one, it means that x of t is either zero or one. It's the only two values that it can take, and that it's and and that this is uh, so. X of t is a birth and death process. It can count up when someone arrives, and that's why uh, we use a parameter lambda for the arrival uh, uh, Poisson process. And it counts down when people are uh, finish or, or leave. Um, and that's why we use the parameter mu for like the, the death rate in the birth and death process for, for the service times. So the values of the rates for the birth and death process, the birth and death process, of course, those are not fixed. Those depend on n. Um, and so let's think about what that means for a second. So lambda n, right? So this is the birth rate. Um, it has two possible values. So if n is equal to zero, then this is lambda. And if n is equal to one, then nobody can arrive, um, so that's zero, right? And mu sub n, similarly, but sort of the opposite, if n is equal to zero, uh, nobody can leave because there's nobody in the system. And if n is equal to one, then mu sub n, we say that's just mu. This is really kind of the simplest uh, sort of queuing system you can imagine in a way. Um, it's just, it doesn't really have any waiting area. There's just one server. And so this is just a good example to, to kind of illustrate uh, sort of what does it mean to kind of solve or understand the queuing systems. Um, and so we're going to quote solve the thing by um, what we want to find is the um, the equilibrium distribution. So over a long period of time, where do we expect uh, the probabilities to be for being in each of the different states? Um, but so we're going to do this, of course, by proposition and, and proof. So proposition for this example, uh, what is the answer to this? And so for this particular queuing system, so for the M M one one system, um, so for this Q, as T goes to infinity, so that's what we're kind of interested in. We want to talk about the limiting distribution, the limiting uh, distribution. of the process. Uh, is the following. So it's it's only got two states. Uh, so it, the the limiting distribution only has two values or two two components. So lambda sub zero. And so this guy is equal to the limit that t goes to infinity for the probability that x of t is equal to zero. 
This is equal to, it turns out, mu over mu plus lambda. And pi 1, so the same kind of statement. This is the limit as t goes to infinity for the probability that x is equal to 1. Oops. And this is equal to lambda over mu plus lambda. All right. Um, maybe you can even sort of see why this is. But let's go ahead and show, because this is a relatively simple system. Uh, sometimes these uh, examples that you do for the first time uh, working on problems, they're, they're so easy you can just sort of see them. Um, but let's just, let's just go through the motions. So the proof, uh, this is going to be a birth and death process. X of t is a birth and death process. So we're going to make use of the, the propositions from the previous uh, lecture. So Oops. Um, I think in, in your notes it's 5.4, right? So what this is is just the statement of what the limiting uh, distributions are for birth and death processes. Uh, so this proof is really just applying the theorem or or the the proposition that we had worked before so the the and and for and for for a system like this there's not a lot going on there's only these two different states and so there's there's very little but you get the idea the idea of this exercise is to sort of see how it works right so the proposition said the following it said pi sub n had two different types of values so it was one plus r to the minus one if n was equal to zero. And that was meant to be a special case. In this case, both cases are special. <laughs> and if n was not equal to zero, uh, it was r sub n times one plus r to the minus one. And that was for n equals one. Uh, or really it's for n not equal. Let's, let's write that, the, write out what it really is for n not equal to zero, but in our case, there's only one value uh, that satisfies that. So what are these things in this case? So r, if you dig back up the, if you dig up the pro proposition, look look at what it is. Uh, so this, this turns out it's just equal to uh, r sub one for n equals one. Um, and this is equal to lambda zero over mu one. Right now that's, I'm putting the indices on the lambdas. Um, but lambda zero, this is lambda, and mu one, this is mu, in our case, right? Um, and so pi, pi zero. So I should just remind you, remember r was meant to be equal to a sum over n of all the different r n's. So this is why r zero, or r is equal to uh, R1, uh, and this was n equals 1 to infinity. That's how these things were defined. Okay, so pi 0 then, oops, whoa. So pi 0 is just 1 plus lambda over mu to the minus 1. All right, and if you tidy that up, that's mu over mu plus lambda and pi 1. Uh, that's just r times 1 over 1 plus r. <laughs> and so that's lambda over mu uh, times, oh, sorry, divided by 1 plus lambda over mu. Right, and so if you put the mu, distribute that in the denominator, just get lambda. Oh, I guess I'll write it in the same way. Lambda divided by mu plus lambda. Right, so that's that's how this procedure works uh, for these problems. When we're trying, we're ultimately just interested in knowing the limiting distribution, and we're going to make reference to the birth and death process. All right, that's.
that's our proof for this one. Uh, next, we'll, we'll look at a different system. It's a little more complicated. Uh, it has some sort of more interesting features going on. Uh, it's not... So for this one, let's call this guy. Uh, these are all, you could all you could consider all these examples if you want, but this one's the M, M1, Q. And it looks, it is still a relatively simple uh, system, but it, it already presents us some sort of interesting results. Um, and so let's go back. I'm going to take the first two parts of the description of the Q are, of course, the same, the M and the M. So let's just take those. In fact, I should honestly, I should sort of change the color of these a little bit. Maybe a darker blue. There we go. because we aren't going to be changing those up. All right, so these two parts are the same. Um, but the the next part says, the next piece says there's one server. And that there's infinite capacity. Right? So in this case, we've got, once again, we've got x of t uh, is, is, has sort of simple values, but they can be anything here. So this is 0, 1, 2, and so on, up to infinity. Uh, there's, no, there's no capacity here, so it's, it's an infinite capacity. Or sorry, it's an infinite capacity here, so you can have as many in there as you want. Um, and we say that this is a, a birth and death process. But the rates are a little bit different now. So we say lambda for any n greater than 0 is just lambda. And mu, oh, sorry, greater than or equal to 0. Uh, and mu sub n. Uh, for any n greater than zero, you could still give a value to mu sub zero. Uh, we go a little out of, I feel like we, we kind of go to a sort of a little bit to extremes to try to not do that. Um, but um, so, and this is mu. Okay, so it's pretty simple. The only difference is uh, that n can be anything. Um, so that's how the system, that's how this system has changed. And so we'll, just like the other one, we'll, we'll work out what is the stationary distribution or the limiting distribution, and we'll, we'll claim it by way of proposition, and then we'll prove it. And the process is the same, but there's sort of some nuances here. Okay, so we say for the MM1Q, If, if you have the arrival rate and service rate obeying a certain relationship, uh, then we will have a limiting distribution and we can say what it is. And so, so if you have arrival rate lambda um, and service rate mu bigger than lambda, right? So in this case, we're supposed to think about what that means for a second. So this means that you're able to process the customers more rapidly than they arrive, right? So it's sort of sensible that in this case, um, you might have a limiting distribution and it's pi sub n. Uh, it's the same statement, it's the probability of, well, I guess we'll write it down. x of t equaling n. And it has a simple expression, so it's 1 minus lambda over mu times lambda over mu to the n. And since lambda is smaller than mu, that ratio is less than 1. Um, and as you increase n, the, the, that, uh, that quantity, lambda over mu to the n, drops. And so if, if though, alternatively, 
if you've got the opposite, so mu is less than or equal to lambda, then there's no equilibrium distribution. All right, so we can prove this now. And the mechanism is the same as before. Um, we're going to make use of the theorem from uh, the birth and death process uh, chapter. All right, so just, maybe I can even steal that. Do I have that from here? Yeah. So this part's the same. All right, so we start from there. And then we just have to see what these uh, pi's and r's are. Right? But before that, uh, we should say, remember, equilibrium only exists if r is finite. So what, what does that mean? So equilibrium only exists if r is less than infinity. And what does r look like again? So it's... So this looks like the following. Remember, we've got this ratio, r sub n is this ratio, so it's lambda sub n minus one, and then lambda sub n minus two, until you get that down to lambda sub zero. And in the denominator, we start with mu sub n, mu sub n minus 1, and we stop at mu sub 1. But in our case, um, all those lambdas and mu's are the same. That is to say, all the lambda n's are lambda, and all the mu sub n's are mu. And so what we have is lambda over mu to the n, right? So this is going to be finite, so we want this to be less than infinity, right? And so this only happens if lambda over mu is less than 1. Or in other words, lambda is less than mu, which makes sense. It just means that the rate at which people are taken out of the system is greater than the rate at which they come in. Okay, but for that case now, we can evaluate R it's just another geometric series and the result is lambda over mu over 1 minus lambda over mu. So that's r. And that, that's enough to tell us what pi 0 and so on are. So pi 0, right, this is 1 plus lambda over mu, 1 minus lambda over mu, to the minus one. All right, so that's pi zero. Um, you can rearrange that if you want. So that's one minus lambda over mu. And pi sub n, where n is bigger than zero. So that's pi zero times r sub n, and r sub n is lambda over mu to the n. And so that's 1 minus lambda over mu, lambda over mu to the n, as promised. So that's our first taste of queuing systems. 
Uh, we've seen how to kind of construct them and classify them and using this Kendall notation. And we've tried a couple of examples, really simple ones, um, and started to see how some of the complexities start to arrive. Till next time.